Welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom. The best the king has to offer. Today's message is partnering with the economy of the kingdom. There is a perfect economic system designed and guaranteed to prosper you into your future. You see, the elite of our society wants the masses of the society to think that there is never enough money and that we should regulate ourselves to the cycle of looking for meaning in making more money. The late Zig Ziglar, who was a motivational speaker, teacher, trainer, and master encourager, once said, money won't make you happy, but everybody wants to find out for themselves. I believe that people generally look at money and the economy from one perspective and in one realm, and that is from the physical perspective and in the physical realm. However, there are two different economic structures vying for your attention. The other is spiritual or supernatural. Both realms have gods, big G, small g, who govern them. The former is designed to steal, kill, and destroy your joy, but the latter is designed to give you hope and prosper your future. So then, it seems that people have a choice to make concerning the God, small g, or God, uppercase g, they will serve. Let's read what Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says about this. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Greek word mammonus is used in our scripture text for mammon, which means wealth personified. It's avarice. It means defiled. Mammon also means three other things. Physical money, the system that uses money to enslave, and the spirit attached to money. We can describe mammon as a personality, a spirit seeking to express itself through money and enslaved people. Money, or mammon rather, is the god over the economy of this world. Wiktionary defines economy as a system of management general regulation and dispositions of the affairs of a state or nation or of any department of government, a system of rules, regulations, rights, and ceremonies, and the study of money, currency, and trade, and the efficient use of resources. Once a person makes the choice for mammon, he or she becomes a partner with that system. Wiktionary defines partner as someone who is associated with another in a common activity or interest. No wonder Jesus draws a clear and distinct line between serving money and serving God. Yet it is very possible to be born again and live out your life enslaved to money. But if you serve God, money will serve you. This is true because the economy of the kingdom of heaven is far superior to the economy of this world. Yes, the kingdom economy operates in the economy of the world, but without the evil systems that are attached to the world economy. Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. God owns the earth and all the people that dwell in it. From an economic viewpoint, that means all the real estate, intellectual property, Precious metals and mineral rights belong to God. He is also the landlord, and we are the leases of the planet entrusted to steward it. However, even though all the wealth belongs to God, not all of it is under his management. Money has a strong connection with the spirit world. That's why Jesus said those that trust in riches would find it very difficult to enter the kingdom of God. To trust in riches is to trust in mammon, Satan, the god of this world. This is why you must guard your mind and consciously think righteous thoughts. Your heart is the most precious currency in the kingdom of God, and it should be guarded with all diligence. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says it this way, 
Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Anytime you get serious about serving God with all your heart and advancing his kingdom on earth, you'll be faced with the decision to choose between mammon and God. The problem is that most people flunk this choice exam because they are not spiritually mature, and so they are ignorant to the fact that mammon is unrighteous. In other words, when you personify money as a god, you've attached an unrighteous spirit to it. When you do not choose God, by default, money has the spirit of mammon attached to it. Luke chapter 16 verse 11 says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Jesus is saying the exact opposite, that if you handle money properly, you are more spiritual and therefore will be entrusted with true riches, riches that are beyond this world, that are heavenly and eternal in value. God wants you and I to handle money and steward it well. True stewardship is about bringing money out of mammon's control and placing it under God's management. True stewardship of money is investing it in the gospel of the kingdom by advancing people who, in turn, advance God's kingdom on earth. You advance people by unlocking the kingdom of God within them, which is their mind. That's why Apostle Paul reiterated over and over the kingdom process called the renewing of the mind. God intends for you to learn how to manage and steward the wealth of the world to help accomplish his vision. God's economic system takes money out of the control of those who serve mammon and transfers it into the hands of those who trust God and are stewards of his kingdom economy. The economy of the kingdom of heaven is built upon this kingdom principle found in the 8th chapter of Genesis, verse 22. While the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. The economy of the kingdom is built upon seed, time, and harvest. God's economy is a generational economy that works in many ways like a regular investment system. There's investing, compound interest, and generational wealth. It is a sowing and reaping economy, which means that whatever we plant and invest today will be harvested into the future. God calls this seed, time, and harvest. The big difference between the world's economy and the kingdom economy is that in the kingdom economy, God provides the seed capital. It's his investment in his citizens. The seed is supplied by God and sown by us. It's capital for your future. Wherever it is sown, it multiplies both in impact and return. Let's read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. When we give ourselves and our money to God's work, he multiplies the results beyond the expectations of natural cause and effect. And in addition to the seed, God also supplies bread in this system. Bread is everything you need in life. It includes food, shelter, clothes, education, transportation, jobs, etc. Everything you need for your family to live in abundance on this earth is covered in the category called bread. By contrast, the world's economy is based on a debt-based system designed to enslave most of the people at the benefit of a few. The world's economy is a buy and sell economy. It inhabits the mindset of leverage and trade. In this system, money is the currency of leverage, fluctuating all the time, and we exchange it for what we value. Money is not leverage in the economy of the kingdom. It is all about sowing out of the world's system and into God's system. And it's about reaping from God's economy, both in this world and in the world to come. I guess you could refer to it as, quote, spiritual money laundering, end quote, but legally obtained. In the world's economy, mammon seduces your desire, enlists your trust, and competes for your pursuit. 
And it may or may not produce a return on your investment. But in the economy of the kingdom, the return on your investment is guaranteed. God's economy provides for our needs and gives us hope and significance. When we desire God, we have hope. When we trust God to meet our needs, he does. When we sincerely pursue God, we find our significance. You see, the economy of the kingdom is a perfect system. God's economy is directed by his vision. Money has a specific purpose in the scope of God's vision. God's economy supersedes the world's economy, but works within an earthly economy with a twofold plan. First, God is diligent to fulfill his covenant that promises state to mankind. And second, God's vision is able to flex and breathe to accommodate changes. For example, God even uses downturns in the world's economy to accomplish this. The kingdom economy not only operates within the ups and downs of the world's economy, it actually thrives during the downturns. The primary purpose of money is not to meet our needs, and we have to be deliberate to put God and his vision first in our finances. Otherwise, subtle shifts take place in our heart, creating a dependence on money from the world's perspective. The primary purpose of money is to fulfill God's vision, to establish and confirm the Abrahamic covenant, and to fulfill this by blessing all people of the world through the teaching and preaching of this gospel of the kingdom in the person of Jesus Christ. Make room for God's vision in your life, and he will make room for you in his vision. In doing so, you will discover your assignment, which is your role in his vision. God's vision and the wisdom that comes along with it changes everything. I mean, literally. Remember, money, detached from its kingdom purpose, starts to move our heart in the wrong direction. Without the righteous foundation of loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, which is catamount to seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we can begin desiring money and trusting it to meet our needs. We may think we're trusting in God, but in reality, we're trusting in money. And when this happens, our sense of desire and trust becomes about money. Seek first the kingdom of God is all about intensity and intentionality. It is about focus and priority. It is about our desire for God and his kingdom. The key to the economy of the kingdom is that we desire, trust, and pursue God, not money. And yet we can be trapped quite easily in trusting money even in prayer. Sometimes we look to the very system that has harmed us and ask it to fix us. Trusting yourself means that you are responsible for your wealth and for meeting your own needs. Trusting yourself makes money responsible for several other very important components of life, such as your identity, your happiness, and your power. However it pans out, trusting yourself leaves you in control. In contrast, trusting in God means that God will provide for you and for the welfare of your family. Trusting God means your identity is secure in Christ and your joy is in the kingdom where God gives you the power to get wealth and to use it to participate in his vision. When you're seeking mammon, you just want more money, whether you have little or much. But when you're seeking God, you want more of God and you always have everything you need. Our physical needs are met by seeking God first, period. Realizing we already have everything we need is what sets us free. Mammon's economy holds us captive in a circle of self-provision while the economy of the kingdom offers a get-out-of-jail-free card, so to speak. Our job is to seek the king and his righteous way of doing things. It is the king's job to meet our needs. And because of this, we can move from a take charge mentality to one of surrender and freedom. We must stop pursuing, trusting, and spending our valuable time desiring money and responsibly participate in the economy of the kingdom, sowing our seeds and eating our bread and steward well what has been given to us. Yes, we live in the world and operate in the world's economy, but we are not of the world, nor the economy which drives it. 
we know that God will provide for our needs. We also believe that everything is a gift from God, and so we live with an attitude of gratitude. We are blessed to be a blessing. Once we get our desire for money back to the right priority, our heart will follow it. Let's read what Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 21 have to say regarding our desire for money. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We understand that as a part of God's vision, we are asked to build a spiritual habitation for the Lord. Using money to advance God's vision aligns the spirit realm over us. Let's read what God says to the prophet Haggai about his plan for wealth in his house. Haggai chapter 2 verses 6 through 9 says this, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts refers to the Lord of heaven's armies. God said, I will shake all nations. How does God shake a nation? He shakes its economy to realign wealth with its purpose and channel it into the house of God. God reminds us that the silver and the gold, even the wealth of all nations, actually belong to him because wealth has a destination, and that destination is God's temple, which you and I are. The temple of God, you and I, is the treasury of the kingdom. That's why God said the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. How does wealth get into God's temple? It gets into God's temple through you. Since you literally house God and his spirit in your body, which is God's temple, God gives you the power to create and get wealth in the physical world, and you bring it to God's temple by obeying the wealth principle of the kingdom of heaven, which is seed, time, and harvest. It is your alignment with this principle that prospers your business, ministry, and your family. It causes your ideas to flourish, multiplies the return on your investments, and it releases your inheritance. However, never forget all this wealth belongs to God and you are a steward of his resources. When money comes into God's house, it is cleansed and becomes available to accomplish God's vision to reach the world. God is using his army of angels to protect and guide us and also to protect and guide the flow of money. There is a war over money, and Satan is working diligently to keep the minds of people focused on money rather than its true purpose. Never forget Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Wealth is not only the means to establish and fulfill the Abrahamic covenant, but also a confirmation of the covenant. The Hebrew definition of ability and wealth in that text bring more meaning to the words. It means that God uses his kingdom strategy along with the power of his army angels to get wealth. The Lord of heaven's armies is at work and he is over the economy of the kingdom and also over his temple, you and I, the treasury of the kingdom. 
This is how we partner with the economy of the kingdom. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.